Devlog number 11. It's been a lot of work to get to this point, but I'm finally back with something I can actually show. So, uh, yeah, I've been hard at work on the stuff I've been talking about. Um, most notable is that I do now, in fact, have a target selector here. So you'll notice this window is a bit smaller. I only have room for the two rows, once again, uh, as the action grid used to be before I had the target spread parameter. But if I open this, I get this new kind of complicated UI. Not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it. This is not um, visually polished. I'm not sure about the colors of the frames. What each color means isn't really explained. This is actor. This is chosen target. This is what the actual targets will be. And man, that color really kind of blends in. There's their are orange pointers there if you can't see them. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, so uh, right. This is functional in that I can specify uh, everything that needs to be specified for a for an action here now. Um, it's just that, yeah, it's not the most polished thing. And am I seeing... Yeah, once again, this is not centered. That's really bothersome. This is this, the edge of this is one pixel too far to the left. <laughs> uh, how annoying. Uh, I know exactly how to fix it, but I'm not going to worry myself with it right now. I, I kept looking at this and thinking like something looks wrong about this. I just now figured out what it is. Oh, it's not even that. No, no, no. This is actually centered correctly. I can't like zoom in uh, in real time or anything. But this little green frame is underneath the thing to its left. So I have like a negative one pixel gap between these because like one, one of these grid cells has a black border, a one pixel black border all the way around it. And I merge the borders and I put them next to each other. So that means that draw order matters. So what I need to do is draw the entire grid and then draw the frame around it like this. That's doable. Okay, anyway. <laughs> So, uh, a large part of the purpose of these videos, let me just remind you uh, and remind myself, is just so that I can talk about what I've done and explain to myself um, what it's supposed to do and what it looks like, and then observe so that I can take notes and fix it later, all the places where uh, what it's supposed to do, as I describe it, doesn't match what it actually does. Anyway, so yeah, stuff like this, super useful to see. I just don't see it when I'm completely on my own working on this. Anyway, uh, so right, target selector. So this looks pretty much the same as ever, uh, which was quite a feat because this little window here, this entire thing has been reprogrammed basically from scratch. Um, so even though it looks like it used to, uh, it is actually a completely separate thing. Um, just had to redo this whole thing uh, in order to, it does actually have one difference. Um, well, you can't see what that's doing here, so let's set this to a wait command. Uh, these always show up, so you can always shift left and right, and that's the only like visible difference you'll see here. Uh, so if you're all the way on the left and you say shift this left, then it'll just go to the end. Um, sure, so I can just rotate all the way around if I want to. Ooh, hey look, another bug. Tooltip sticks when I go over there. Okay, so I need to fix that. All right. Uh, useful notes to myself. Anyway, let's start this over. Ooh, I don't have a start over button. I guess the closest equivalent is like that. Man, I don't like how many more button presses or clicks or whatever this is to uh, to do everything in this UI. So yeah, I'm just in this like awkward transitional period where I have my like, this is technically functional and usable. It's just it needs so much polish to feel nice. Um, my protectors only have one ability. You need more abilities. You're not much of a protector. You're just an attacker with some defense. You're supposed to have a defensive ability that does what? What did I list here? Protector abilities. Fortify. Apply status to friend that increases defense stat for three energy. Okay, so that's what I jotted down. Uh, I should add that. I was going to add a third champion today. Um, right, but like I can do stuff like now. Uh, let's see. Did I, I... I solved this last time, didn't I? Yeah, so here's two solutions. Don't know which one of these was the... 
the last video I did. What are your actions? This is volley, this is shoot. I need separate icons for these. Yeah, so this was the one I did last time I messed with this. Oh, I also tweaked the layout of uh, these. Oh, also, hang on, that's not all I did. Uh, the stats and equip buttons are gone here, and this now uses the champion detail list view. So, um... This thing is in here now. Uh, I have the status effects list, which is actually completely new. There are no status effects in showcase scenario yet, but in addition to seeing the icons here of status effects that are applied, I can now get a closer look at them if I look at this list. Um, uh, sure, let's look at that in case I see something important while I'm explaining it to myself. So like if I go to, why don't I have stars here? Maybe I reset my progress since I solved these, because I know I did solve these on video, right? Yeah, I totally did. It was just the challenges I didn't bother with. Um, oh, right. Uh, another change I made. Uh, these numbers now pop up in all of the appropriate places. So they pop up here. They pop up here. Uh, if I have just one of any particular type of champion in the combat. It won't show a number after its name, but as soon as there are two, whether it's on the player team or the enemy team, you'll get these numbers here uh, in all of the appropriate places, you know, across teams. So like if there was a mage on this team, you would also see uh, this would be mage one, this would be mage two, this would be mage three, because the enemies are by default after the, the party. Anyway, so if I step forward and just let these wait, the ooze will spew on me. Uh, so now, I did used to be able to click on these and see a little pop-up that described them. Uh, again, you might need some polish. It's a few more clicks away, so you have to go here and go to the status effects list to see this. I'm thinking one thing I'll do here is add some, like, uh, similar to the equipment screen that I have here with, like, uh, yeah, so this stuff. So Venom, costs two energy requires one focus, and deals to earth damage uh, in some way. In this, this like abbreviated form here of like what effect that has. I'm gonna have a thing like that uh, probably also here that gives you like a quick view of like how much longer this is going to last and what it does. Uh, but you come in here, decreases health by two per turn in the earth element with that function if you really want to look at it. Um, I added this little triangle that looks like an interaction symbol here, which turns to expand, um, but I need to make this expand downward instead of upward because this should hold still, the rest should go down. Okay, so that's a change for me. Uh, and I'll bet that also doesn't relay itself out if it wouldn't fit, like if it was a super long formula that would go off the top from here or off the bottom. Like, if it's a really long one that just wouldn't fit on the screen at all, I don't have a solution for that yet. I don't have, like, scrolling or anything. Don't know what I'll do about that. That's that's a problem for, like, a few months down the line. Anyway, so, uh, right. So, champion detail list view is on the battle screen now. Uh, target selector shows what it needs to show. If I look at this here... What's going to happen if I point at that? Ooh, the tooltip's in the wrong place, for one thing. Nothing. That does nothing at all. Okay, so I need, in addition to the interactive selector... Well, you don't want to attack. You're a mage. You should cast a spell, like Venom. Uh, um, yeah, sure. You know, I haven't even explained how this works yet. <laughs> right. Uh... So you choose the familiar stuff, you know, target type here, uh, target spread here for whatever your spell is. Doesn't have any meaning since there's only one enemy here. Then you can go down to the grid and uh, choose your actual target. Let's go back to the showcase scenario. And uh, actually set some stuff up. Um, one thing I really need to do here is to... Uh, I want to have, so one of the main purposes, actually, the original purpose of the showcase scenario um, was just to sort of show off how the game mechanics play out under different and interesting circumstances. The most interesting circumstance, I think, right now would be a battlefield with, like, a huge number of combatants. You know, fill this entire 3x3 grid with uh, fighters. And this one, too. Input commands for all of them. Ooh, this UI would not support that at all. 
Okay, so I have other obstacles in my way of that, but okay, so let's just say like five each side. This would probably draw over top of this as it scrolls down here, but it would be usable. Uh, and yeah, like multi-hitting actions, things like that, just are not as interesting with only two as they would be with more. Anyway, so you're going to attack forever. This still has sensible defaults on it, so I don't really need to mess with that. Uh, let me explain why this is here instead of here where the thing uh, you'd actually hit is. Because each action, I don't know what to do about this. I feel like this is wrong, but, you know, it makes sense from a code perspective, but not from a player perspective. So obviously it needs to change then. <laughs> uh, but... Um, your default target is going to be the first thing, so the topmost thing, in the row that you are... <laughs> yeah, row, this vertical thing. Uh, probably should change that term still. Uh, that you're targeting. Then where that actually will land will be this sort of auto-chosen thing. Um, since this ability has a range of one, I'm only able to reach those things. Uh, so what happens if I put you back here? Right, so you choose this, but you have no target. The orange cross is gone because you're unable to hit anything from all the way back there with an ability which has a range of only one. Um, so I'll put you back here. So it doesn't matter who you target as protector. However, so here's a difference. Oh, but I can't move these around. All right, well, let's do it this way. No, that still doesn't mean anything. Um, well, I can choose myself or my archer friend here as a separate target. Okay, so let's be the archer instead of the protector. Archer goes back here. Protector just going to attack enemy. Don't worry about this. Okay, so I am an archer. Um, I shoot somebody. So I can say, shoot my friend, and it'll move this selector over here. You know what? Could I get rid of this entirely? No, no, I couldn't because like, okay, so I have this automatically switching from friend to enemy. Like if I'm shooting friend, so I'm targeting like this half of the board um, in one of these positions. I can switch it up here and say enemy. Now it's over in that position. Uh, these positions are sort of mirrored, so if I put it back here and switch to friend, then it'll go all the way back here, because this is row zero, row one, row two, row zero, row one, row two, uh, just on the opposing team. Um, but if I go here, then it'll automatically switch to enemy. Um, Yeah, so the intuitive way to do this is like, choose shoot, then just like go straight down here and say, I want to shoot at this archer. Great. You know what? You can do that. You can point at that. These will be set appropriately. Maybe this should be like the top of this window, like the first thing the cursor gets onto. Anyway, or I can say, I want to shoot here. So you're shooting this row. That's the closest champion in that row, so it's going to default to that one or shoot all the way back here. Well, for one thing, your weapon doesn't actually reach, but for another thing, there are no champions back there, so the nearest one it'll find in its, its search criteria is the archer back here. Anyway, but um, the ability I have with having this implemented is now I can actually specify that I'm targeting the archer instead of just whoever is the first enemy on the team. So I can have the archer uh, focus entirely on the one in the back. And uh, this fight will go a little better than it would have otherwise. So protectors are just going to bash each other with their shields for a while. Archer's going to shoot the other archer and almost kill it in one blow because archers are pretty strong. This one's still just going to shoot my protector like that. Uh, oh yeah, that shoot ability doesn't even have a sound associated with it. That's right. Uh, so protector up front's taking a beating. But it's doing fine. This one can kill the other archer. So yeah, enemy team's offensive capabilities have just pretty much gone away. Um, you know, I should probably show the green highlight here. Like where the ability is targeted. Or maybe that's just 
too confusing. I don't know. Some, something is wrong with the way I'm doing that, and I'm not sure how to fix it yet. Anyway, so this target is going to be here. Like, it's just the actual target that matters, but like for diagnostic purposes, knowing where you're pointing and like what the, that pointing at like this square or, well, you're pointing at this square, knowing that you're pointing here and resol resolving to that could be useful for knowing that, you know, on turn nine, uh, if a champion has like moved into this space or like these two spaces, you'll know why it's landing there instead of here. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, so uh, being able to target the archer has meant that I get to take that out with three health for protector, seven health for archer. If I had just done exactly what the enemy team does and shoot here instead, so I think this will be a mirror image of the, uh, the enemy team's actions. Let's go a little faster. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I win with one here and seven here. So I still took the advantage by being the first one to move. Oh, also they lost some ground because uh, I killed the front one first. Anyway, um, <laughs> at, this point, at this point, I feel like I'm just kind of rambling to myself and not saying anything that anybody else will understand. Uh, bear with me, it's part of the process. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, oh dear okay so anyway with being able to target things I could definitely actually add another champion you know what let's do it just so I feel like I haven't just been an incoherent mess this whole time and I can actually you know accomplish something uh, let's go over here and this is the wrong file showcase scenario uh, did I cover all the important changes I made? Yes. There are some, like, super minor ones I don't need to talk about, but that's those are the important ones. Um, so I was saying, you know what, let's do a couple of things. Make us more interesting. So protector. Abilities. Attack. And what did I call this? I have this sort of planned out, just so I don't have to, like, make up names on my own. Fortify. Uh... Archer has shoot and volley, that's fine. Kind of want to give here, just so that I can tell at a glance, uh, tell these apart, let's make shoot icon attack for now. Uh, that's the wrong icon, but it'll do. I'll draw new ones at some point. Uh, let's make a healer. Uh, before I make a healer, let's implement the fortify ability. So attack, sure, so that can go here. Uh, you should just have the shield icon, obviously. Uh, boy, these overloaded icons. I have like almost no icons assigned to this scenario, but... Um, Sure, I'm using a few for a lot. <laughs> uh, style guide for this game that I'm completely not following um, would be to have a unique icon for everything. Uh, actor sound, no. I don't have anything ready to go for that. Visual effect, nothing yet. Resource costs, okay, so this should be expensive. At least moderately. Um, what did I say? Three energy, a little more expensive than... Why does the attack cost two? No, this should cost five. So this is sort of like parity with the... Vo okay, volley only costs four. Okay, fine. Let's make this cost four. Make attack cost one. You don't need to tire yourself out just swinging your shield around or whatever you're doing. Um... But using it defensively, now that's exhausting. Uh, so targets are self and friend and single. So you can target yourself with this. You can target your friend, keep them safe. Uh, range can be two, sure, why not? No, it should be one. One is fine. Spell type, okay, so now this gets complicated. I think this is apply status. I'm gonna have to look, he not here, here. Let's just search apply status and see if I have it right. 
apply status, spell type apply status, that looks right, okay. So that's your spell type. That gives you a spell type apply status which expects what fields after it. Spell type apply status wants status identifier, I'll call it fortified, just to have a different name than the ability that applies it. What else do you want? Expiration type. Okay, let's do something interesting with this. So instead of um, expiring after a certain number of turns, let's have this expire after you take a certain amount of damage. So basically like it'll reduce damage for some number of attacks. Let's just say two. So for two attacks, you're gonna gain, what did I call my stats? So they just attack and defense. Where do I define my, yeah, stats, vitality, attack and defense, okay. Um, so expiration type is, it could just stay there forever, let's not do that. It could stay there forever but be dispellable. It can stay for a certain number of turns. It can stay for a certain number of ability usages. So like say this were an attack buff, you know, say next two attacks do double damage. Um, double damage would be a little more complicated. You had to have to put that in the damage formula for the ability, but you could do it. Uh, you know, plus two damage, whatever. Uh, next two spells do plus two damage. Um, but I want damage count. So until you take a certain number of hits, which will be specified, I think, by the next field I put in here, uh, that effect will persist. If it is damage count, then it needs an expiration element identifier. Okay, so I'm specifically saying um, This lasts for two, uh, two physical hits. Physical, and I think that's actually, if I, if I do this, uh, then that's exactly what that says, right? So I need a power formula and a duration formula. Hold on, I think I'm in the wrong spot here. No, I'm not. No, this is correct. So power formula. Um, uh, null. There is no power modulation. So power formula is where you'd put stuff like, uh, if I have a focus stat, um, then I can read that to boost up the, uh, the power of the spell. Um, why do I have those separate from the... Wait, hold on. Power formula. Oh, okay. So this is a formula that's evaluated once at cast time for a status effect, which sets a parameter that persists for the entire duration of the status that gives it a number that it can read to determine like how much effect it should have. So like if I cast a magic power buff on my mage, then my mage casts a venom spell on an enemy then the magic power buff runs out, but the venom status is still going, then it'll retain the power that it was cast with, uh, rather than reevaluate the formula for the mage's now weaker uh, magic stat, is kind of how that would work. So anyway, that's why that's separated out like that. So duration formula, This one's a little bit um, overloaded, but it just needs to have an output of an integer, which when your expiration type is damage count, that integer is the number of hits in this element that you can take before it goes away. Okay, so for two hits, you will have the fortified status. Now the fortified status knows nothing of like, um, how long it lasts. It just knows what it does. How long it lasts and how it expires is entirely a property of the caster. So I could use the same fortified status, which I'm about to, um, which I'm about to create. 
uh, and just have like some enemy have it permanently or, uh, you know, other spells could apply it for a certain number of turns instead of a certain number of hits. Um, I'm not sure that's the right way to go, but it's how it's set up right now. Okay, so whole new category here. Easiest way to go here is just to copy one of these. So statuses will be down here somewhere. Maybe I'm not doing a healer. Maybe I'm just doing this ability. Yeah, I think that's what it's going to be. Healer will be another time. However, I'm unblocked now so I can actually like add stuff since I can choose my targets. That's what was stopping me from doing this whole process for the last several of these. Um, sure, this one's fine. Just copy haste. Only instead of modifying speed, it will modify defense. Oh boy, the shield icon again. Uh, it doesn't tick. It doesn't tick. It uh, doesn't make any noise or visual effect when it expires. Huh. Interesting that I have this in here. I don't think I have anything in any current scenario that uses those. But I wrote some code for it, so that's nice. Uh, effect type is indeed stat change. The stat identifier is defense, I believe. Once again, that is what I called it, right? Defense, yes. And the way defense works is it's added to the negative number, which determines damage and clamp to zero. Right, okay. So I will dampen all damage by... Uh, not by the power, because the power is zero in this case. So dampen all damage by two plus power. Uh, so if you want a more powerful version of fortified, you could do that. See, like the other way to do this, which I feel like makes more sense, is just to say uh, this dampens by its input value of power. And I can actually set the strength of this. You know, you can, you can do it either way. Um, Halfway through, I decided this makes more sense. All right, so minus two damage. Archer does five. I feel like minus two is a little weak. Minus three damage. I don't know. Like, what? I'm just balancing this based on hypotheticals. Minus two damage uh, for two turns. So, um... This won't be super interesting in the encounter I have set up now, but let's make it interesting. I think I have that fully set up, right? Add value power. Mm -hmm, that's your amount. Uh, so yeah, add to the defense stat your input value. Uh, so let's do this. Let me put a second archer on the enemy team. Hold on, this is champions, right? I'm not writing this today. Let's do that another day. Uh, so enemy team gets a second archer. Can I somehow survive? Since I am winning by default just because I go first with a perfectly symmetrical team, let's have an asymmetric team. Um, ooh, perhaps even better. They get just two archers and I get a protector and an archer? Hmm, I don't know yet. Anyway, let's just give them two archers. Uh, row one, position two. Sure. Uh, here, let's make this a bit more visually pleasing. Whoa, whoa, no, no. This, that's, this is what I want. This is what I want. There we go. Nine is right next to zero. Uh, sure, everybody's going to take the same action. That's all fine. And I think that'll do exactly what I want, right? Whoa, whoa, right. You're still running. Let's see if it accepts that. I probably made a lot of mistakes there. I have a feeling that the stuff I just typed is not going to be exactly correct. Oh, right. This takes forever for some reason. Oh, man. Like, <laughs> way back in my backlog is figuring out why this is. Man. <laughs> I'm having more and more trouble finding the, the time to do all the things I'm trying to do here. Yeah, just too many, and I'm only one person, so I can only do one thing at a time. 
Fine, parameter not correct. Yeah, I'll fix that someday. It's it's not a big deal. <laughs> uh, all these little things adding up. Debug. Okay. Uh, of course. Deserializer position. I'll fail around the beginning of formula. Line 118, character 20. So 118 is this. Expertation. There's my problem. Okay. This should be almost immediate because it's just copying a file over, right? Then what's all the waiting? All right, that wasn't so bad. It's copying all the files so many times. Okay. Line 88, character 14, really? Earlier? This is not showcase scenario dot JSON. I have failed around the end, end of ability one. Oh, I see. Okay, so for one thing, this must be a zero based index, and also the deserializer came all the way back here. Uh, all right, so it's unhappy with this for some reason. Did I not fill that in all the way? So it got to the end and it was expecting to read something else or something? Okay, power formula, duration formula. Oh, stack size max. Mm -hmm. I do need to specify that. So how many fortifies can be on a single target? I'm going to say as many as you have protectors to cast them. So zero is a special value, which means as many as you want. If I said one and one protector tried to cast this on one champion, then another one tried to cast it on the same one, then the original fortify would be replaced by the new one, I think, if its duration was longer or something. But this way you can just have as many as you want. If you have five protectors, then five protectors can all act as a shield for one archer or whatever you want to do with this. That sounds fine. Okay, are you happy yet? So now I have a challenge once this launches to try and actually beat the team with one more archer than I get. Since they're not using their abilities to the fullest extent that they can, it might be possible. There we go, all right. Black screen, there we go. Okay, um, so I've just invalidated my old uh, solutions to this. So add protector, add archer. Obviously I'm gonna want archer back here. Protector will wanna protect itself. Fortify self, sounds great. Now that costs how much energy? Four energy. Okay, so you will go down to one. Applies fortified status for two turns, plus two defense. You're not going to stand up to a lot of archer hits there. Um, let's see, and I don't have a way to regenerate energy, really. And this only applies to two. Yeah, this isn't going to work. <laughs> well, um, okay. Um, so you're only adding a token amount of damage. Let's make the archer the heavy damage dealer. Okay, so volley uses how many? I feel like I maybe need to have like two energy charge per turn because like if everything uses at least one energy and I only gain one per turn, then that means without waiting, I'll just run out. Uh, this uses five energy. Okay, well, um, fine. So blow your volley right away on, oh, I feel like this should somehow default to this. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so hit everybody with one of those. How much damage does that do? Does it matter? It might not. Um, no, it does. Okay, so volley does four damage. And then you're gonna pick off the one archer, because now I can do that. Pick off the other archer. Hope your protector's still alive, absorbing all the hits. 
And then you're just going to shoot their protector forever. Okay, I think that will probably win the fight just fine. Um, since you're never going to get the energy back to do this again, you can just be wearing down the their protector then. Yeah, so this is not balanced correctly. I think this energy system that I have going here, again, like, it should charge by two per turn, I think. Uh, or there should be, ooh, look at that overlap. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, or there should be um, abilities that don't use any energy. Uh, anyway, let's see what happens here. So spend four energy to get Fortify on Protector 1. Received Fortified status, so let's look at that. Fortified, plus two defense, and result power, power two, expires after taking physical damage two times. Mm -hmm. Boy, that just barely fits, yikes. <laughs> That's real close to the edge. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, so you are now fortified. You'll take nothing from Protector 2 hitting you, and only three from each archer arrow. Uh, oh, but the hit from Protector 2 is wearing that down. So by the time Archer 3 shoots you, you're going to be undefended, other than your base defense. Okay, so let's hope Archer 1 manages to get the job done uh, before before you go down. Right, so volley everybody so that the two Archers are one-hit kills. Health was unaffected. But status was affected, right? So now this will say expires after taking physical damage one time. Lost two health. Only two, right, because you have one base defense and it's plus two and an arrow does five damage. So now the status should expire. Mm -hmm. uh, if I had assigned a visual effect or uh, and or an expiration sound, you would see and hear those there. Archer 3 is going to hit my Protector harder, so that'll do 4 damage. Okay, this dude's not going to survive, so I have to hope Archer 1 can stand up to Protector beating on it for a while. Okay, it might. Alright, so you lost an Archer. Still got one left. My Protector's going to die to this arrow. I think I'm going to win this one just because Archer's attack power is so much more than Protector's attack power. And here goes the other Archer. Great. And you don't do enough damage to outpace me, even with your defense. Yeah, there we go. Okay, neat. I won that asymmetric fight just because the enemy team didn't play smart. Whoops, I pressed the back button. All right, let's, let's see that again. Whoa. Buttoning through this at that speed leaves something to be desired. A lot of things in this game do, man. I'm just like in the awkward middle where like everything's a little bit broken, even though you can kind of see the good stuff coming out. <laughs> All right, there we go. I win. Uh, Archer has three health left. Protector's dead, but did his job. All right, cool. Great. So um, I'll call it a success. I can have larger battles and meaningfully target things and overcome like seemingly harder scenarios than uh, than what I'm bringing to the table. But yeah. All right. So man, just like a mountain of work ahead of me to polish all that up. But hey, it's it's coming together. You can see it. <laughs> All right, I'll see you next time with, uh, have no specific plans, but something. We can uh, build this out more and add healers and see how that changes things. Sounds good. See you then.